Hello and welcome back to FPV Reviews. Today we'll be building the outer wing sections for Gemini V2 using the high quality laser cut kit from Flying Squirrel Models. So let's get started. We'll first need to locate two of each of the following parts. Part number 1, part number 12, part number 13, and part number 14. All of these parts are laminated so we'll start by gluing them together with the second part of the same number. We'll assemble them into a box structure where part 13 is the forward spar and part 14 is the rear spar. Don't glue these parts together just yet. We'll take the 25mm by 27mm carbon tube and insert it into the box structure so that it protrudes just slightly past part number 12. Now use a piece of tape to mark where it goes flush with part number 1. Pull the carbon tube out of the box structure and cut to this mark with a Dremel tool and cutoff wheel or a hacksaw. If the carbon tube has a glossy finish, we'll need to remove that using 100 grit sandpaper. Insert the carbon stub into the box structure once again. Also locate the center wing section and insert the 23mm by 25mm by 1000mm carbon tube into it. Slip the box structure with 25 by 27mm carbon stub tube over it, sliding it inward until part number 1 mates flat with the nacelle of the center wing section. The dowels should line up with holes in part number one. Tack glue all of the joints, making sure that the box structure is not warped. Once you've checked visually for warping, remove the box structure from the center wing section, lie it on a flat surface to verify it's not warped, and glue the joints properly, including the carbon tube. Now we'll use some of the square stock and some of the scraps left over from this center wing section build. We'll need to extend the 36 inch square stock by splicing the scraps onto it. We'll do this by making diagonal cuts and gluing the joint over a piece of plastic sheet on a flat surface. We'll need two 1 quarter inch by 3 eighths inch pieces for the main spar and two one quarter inch by one quarter inch pieces for the rear spar and all four of them should be at least 43 inches long. Glue the two one quarter inch square pieces to piece number 14 to extend the spar and do the same with the two one quarter inch by three eighths inch pieces glued to part number 13 with the excess protruding on the front end of the plywood plate. Now locate the plan called Gemini V2 Wing Kit Assembly Detail. Printed full size and lay it on a flat surface with a sheet of plastic on top. Place the box structure with its spar extensions directly on top of the plans and locate rib number two, which will be in three pieces. Using a weight of some sort, in this case a cordless drill, hold the box structure down firmly directly over the plans and glue the parts of rib number two onto the box structure in its place over the plans. You might notice that it seems impossible to insert the center part of rib number two but not to worry. Simply cut the ribbon half and glue each half to the box structure. Do the same with part number three, noting that it is a thicker rib and will be directly over the spar where the change in dihedral occurs. It's okay if this rib is inclined slightly to split the difference in the dihedral angles, but it's not critical. Locate ribs number four six of them, ribs number five, four of them, and part number six. In 
insert them precisely over the plans by putting them in between the ribs sideways, then tilting them upright in place. Use a square to make sure that the rib part number 6 is upright at a 90 degree angle. Make sure all spars are in the rib pockets all the way, then tack glue them into place over the plans. Now use some more of the square stock scraps to make the longitudinals near the box structure only gluing them halfway across rib number three so as to leave room for the longitudinals outboard of there to also rest on rib number three. Those longitudinals can all be glued in place and then trimmed and sanded flush at the ends. We can now use medium CA or epoxy to glue the 7 mm by 1.2 mm by 1000 mm carbon strips to the top and bottom of each spar. It's easiest to have plenty of clamps handy for this, including at least two C clamps to hold the strips closely to the spars at the dihedral bend. Make sure that the glue is fully dry before removing the clamps. Before sheeting the leading edge of the wing, it will be helpful to glue some one quarter inch square scraps to the box structure to act as a shelf for the sheeting. Further out, the three eighths by one quarter inch spar will do that, so this is only needed for the front of the box structure. Apply one sixteenth inch sheeting to the leading edge starting inboard in front of the box structure first to get used to it, as these are much smaller sections. Apply to the top and bottom, always in a two-step process, edge gluing to the leading edge first, then once that's dry, to the rest of the sheet. Use the same technique for the sheeting to be applied to the outer part of the wing section as we did with the spar extensions, making a diagonal scarf joint with a straight edge then gluing the two pieces together over a flat surface on a sheet of plastic. Now glue them onto the wing in the same manner as the smaller pieces of sheeting, starting with the leading edge, then the rest. It's okay to dribble glue from the inside if necessary to get good adhesion of the sheeting. This thin balsa sheeting will give a good shape to the leading edge and will also lend structural rigidity and torsion to the entire outer wing structure, so it's important that it be adhered well. Now is the time to check the wing section for warping. If none, then fine, but if there is some, no worries as it can be corrected during the next step. Now we'll cut some pieces of cross grain webbing from 1 16th inch balsa sheet to about 35 millimeters wide. Place the wing on a flat surface with a sheet of plastic underneath and glue the webbing onto the back of the front spar. Do one piece at a time and check for warpage of the wing section in between each one. If you started this step with some warpage, then place a block underneath one corner while gluing each piece of webbing to induce an opposite twist while each piece of webbing is glued in to place until the warping is corrected. Check for every part. This method provides an incremental way to precisely control warping. Cut more pieces of webbing to 28 millimeter wide and glue them to the front of the rear spar. Mark and notch the trailing edge to fit into the ribs Glue it in place and trim it to length. Cut a strip from a piece of 1 8 inch sheet balsa 
16 millimeters wide and at least 510 millimeters long. Glue in place at the rear of the number five ribs and trim off at the end. Locate four parts number 17 and three parts number 15. Glue two parts number 15 to rib number one, one behind each spar in a similar way as the center wing section. Glue the third part number 15 as a gusset at the last rib number four where the trailing edge ends. Glue two of the number 17 parts as gussets on either side of the rib number three where it meets the trailing edge and the other two as gussets for the one quarter inch balsa strip at the trailing edge of ribs number five. Glue two three eighths inch by a quarter inch strips to a piece of trailing edge stock to form the aileron. Sand smooth and install Robart hinges or your favorite brand. Bevel the edges of the aileron to make sure it has plenty of freedom of movement or deflection angle without binding. Glue hinges only to aileron at this time and paint it with automotive primer, then the paint color of your choice. While the paint is drying, glue the servo plate, part number 18, flush with the bottom of the wing, just to the outside of the second rib number 5 as shown. Install the servo and extend its lead to the rib part number one, leaving enough extra wire to allow it to be connected easily to the center wing section's female servo lead. Now install the aileron, gluing its hinges to the wing section permanently. In the case of the Robart style hinges, the inner two can be glued to the adjacent ribs while we'll install a couple of struts made from 3 8 inch by quarter inch balsa scrap for them to glue to. The wing outer section is now ready for a light sanding and to be covered with your choice of covering material. Our favorite is Monocoat in light colors, but there are many options available including transparent and translucent colors, metallics, fluorescent colors, and an array of opaque colors. White is the most practical, but don't let that get in the way of your personal preference. Plans and kits are available at the links below along with lots more information about the Gemini V2 UAV and our other advanced projects. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon for notifications. We've also got some exciting flights planned as soon as the weather improves, so stay tuned for that as well. Until next time, have a good one.